Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today's virtual education program with Cancer Support Community Los Angeles. I am Larissa Montalvo, and I welcome you to this week's webinar titled, New Methods for Detecting and Managing Prostate Cancer. Today, we will be joined by Dr. Jeremy Calais of the UCLA Department of Molecular and Medical Pharmacology to discuss a new method for detection and visualization of metastatic prostate cancer not previously visible with conventional and molecular imaging techniques. This technique, now offered at UCLA, aims to improve management of recurrent and high-risk cancers. Before we begin, if this is your first time joining us, Cancer Support Community Los Angeles is a premier nonprofit organization providing vital social and emotional support to families facing cancer, including patients, caregivers, and their loved ones, all at no cost. Our programs include support groups, healthy lifestyle classes, social activities, and educational programs such as this one. If you would like to learn more about our services or watch past webinars, please visit our website at www.cancersupportla.org. Without further ado, I would like to welcome today's speaker. Dr. Jeremy Calais is Assistant Professor and Director of the Clinical Research Program at the Amanson Translational Theranostics Division of the Department of Molecular and Medical Pharmacology at UCLA. He is also a member of the Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center and the UCLA Institute of Urologic Oncology. Dr. Calais received his MD degree from the user University of Paris Diderot in 2010. He subsequently trained in nuclear medicine and cancer imaging at the Henry Becquerel Cancer Center of the University of Rouen and was board certified by the French Society of Nuclear Medicine in 2014. His work focuses on improving the outcomes of cancer patients by translating and applying novel diagnostic and therapeutic approaches. He uses PET and CT imaging for cancer phenotyping, radiation therapy planning, and therapy response assessment. Welcome, Dr. Calais. Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, very much for this uh, introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here, and I would like to thank uh, Cancer Support Community for giving me the, the opportunity to share here my experience with PSMF at CT at uh, UCLA. All right, first slide, sorry for this delay. So today I'm gonna to talk about, as uh, introduced, new methods for detecting and managing prostate cancer. But in fact, I will mostly talk about PSMA PET-CT imaging, which is the new technique we are introducing here at UCLA. And we have done uh, research for the past uh, four years with that technique here at UCLA. So before I start, uh, here are my disclosures. I will pause here just Five seconds. They're all related to GSMF at CT research or treatments. So, first, what is nuclear medicine and theranostics? Um, the nuclear medicine is the medical use of a radioactive drug uh, that we inject into the body. And we know that this uh, drug or tracer has a specific target that we are looking for, and the radiation that is that are being emitted from this radioactive drug or radiopharmaceutical or tracer can be used to do either imaging or molecular radiotherapy. Today, we're going to talk about imaging. So you're looking for a target. So in that case, it will be a prostate cancer target. You inject that tracer that will go to this target, emit some radiation, you detect the radiation on both sides of the body that are getting out of the body. And with that, you make images and you can get uh, the, the repartition of that, the biodistribution in the body. So here we're talking about prostate-specific membrane antigen, PSMA. So this protein is highly overexpressed by the prostate cancer cells uh, at very high level and lo at low expression level in the normal organs. So you can have a, a good differential between the signal you see that you know that is in the prostate cancer cells and the signal, the low signal in the normal organs. And this is the target, so PSMA, this, this is the kind of a schematic view of the molecular tracer agent. And this is the chemistry formula, and with that we do images. Here uh, is a video that can maybe better explain uh, how it works. Let me try to make this works. It works. Wow. 
When injected into the body, the ligand attaches itself, like a key fitting into a lock, to a protein called prostate-specific membrane antigen, or PSMA for short, which is found on the surface of prostate cells. Up to a thousand times more PSMA is found on prostate cancer cells, including prostate cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. And here it's uh, how it looks like once you get the images. So I hope the sound was not too much. I think it gets really nice to see how, how it goes in, in 3D and in the body. So this agent, PSMA PET, has been recently approved by the FDA at UCLA and at UCSF. As you can see here, the date was December 1st. So this is new. This is the first, uh, you can see here, first drug for PET imaging of PSMA positive lesions in prostate cancer in the US. Other tracers, because you can have multiple uh, tracers like that, they're all the same, they all go to PSMA, they all do PET CT imaging, but there are others coming, and that would be, I think, approved by mid 2021. These ones are owned by industry companies and they will come. So little by little, we'll have much more PSMA PET uh, availability across the US. But currently, it's just approved at UCLA and UCSF because we are making it on site. And so the manufacturing process is done at UCLA. So that's what the FDA approves. Here is uh, how it looks like in a patient. Um, you can see that you still have some expression or some signal in other organs than prostate and prostate cancer. For some reason, you have some uptake in the salivary glands. So these are the salivary glands. You can see here the liver, the spleen and the kidney because most of the tracer goes out of the body and is excreted through the urine. So that's the kidney expression here. And then it goes into the bladder. After maybe two or three hours, almost everything is gone and has uh, decayed because you know it's radioactive. So little by little, it just disappears in radiation. And after three or four hours, there is uh, almost nothing uh, in the body. And here it's uh, how it looks like in you know, a prostate cancer patient. You can see these black dots here. My pointer. These black dots here, in fact, they are all prostate cancer lesions. And if you like, you look in more detail in the actual slice, you can see the very easily here. This this kind of signal here indicates the prostate cancer within the prostate. So you can see here how it looks like on the CT, it's like black and white images. And you kind of add the color where this PSMA expression is. And it shows very easily, these scans are very easy to read for the, the radiologist or the clinical medicine physician. Uh, where are these lymph nodes here in the pelvis or even a bone metastasis. So this is how it looks like in a prostate cancer patient. This can have a major impact on patient care. For example, this patient, was uh, scheduled initially to get uh, surgery, but finally, because we detected uh, lymph node disease here or bone metastasis here, well, in fact, the disease has already spread out outside of the prostate, so patient didn't get surgery and was switched to another therapy approach more adapted to his uh, stage. This is overall our experience. We started in October 2016, we have done between 3,005 and 4,000 uh, scans here at UCLA. So we kind of a, a pioneer site in the, in the US for that. Let's look a little bit more on the indication for which it has been approved. So the IM68 PSMA11, which is the kind of scientific name for the tracer, is approved for men with prostate cancer with suspected metastasis who are candidates for initial definitive therapy. So it basically means when the disease has just been discovered, the urologist or the oncologist need to know where is the disease, if it's still confined to the prostate, or if it has uh, spread out outside of the prostate. So at that stage, that we call primary staging, it is indicated. And then you can see below when there is a recurrence, but this, I will talk about that. Later on. So for initial staging, 
This is the same example as just showed before, but I showed here the what we call conventional imaging. So here is a bone scan. Bone scan is like a calcium mimetic tracer. So it goes where the bone is active and it shows where this, basically in the skeleton, you can see some, some joints, they consume a lot of calcium because they are active. And so that's the method that was historically used to detect metastasis in the bone because when you have a cancer metastasis in the bone, it creates a reaction in the surrounding healthy bone. And here is the CT, that's the anatomical image that you do to kind of analyze the shape of the organs, but you do not have the functional information. It's like a black and white image, you just look at the shape. So this patient, as I said, was scheduled to get either surgery or radiation therapy, a local treatment on the prostate. And with the PSMA PET scan, we discover finally these lesions that were unseen on these uh, kind of conventional scans before. And so the treatment was switched to a systemic therapy. You have many drugs that work pretty well in these patients. So it, lead, it led to a very much more individualized uh, treatment approach for that patient. Here I put some numbers. It's not very digest, but I just want to highlight that one in a, in a study when we did the scans in almost 800 patients for patients that were potentially scheduled to undergo surgery or candidates to go to surgery initially, well, only 300 of them actually underwent surgery because the scan probably showed something outside of the prostate and patient decided to do, or physician decided to do radiation therapy or systemic therapy because uh, of the scan as a consequence of the scan findings. So that's what I want to see, show here is that only 36% of these patients actually underwent surgery finally. So it can uh, upstage patients, like I just showed before. I just showed here another example. So uh, this is again the bone scan. Uh, this was called negative. This is the CT. And the CT was um, also called negative. You can see here the primary tumor in the prostate. That's the yellow arrow here. That's this lesion here in the prostate. And you can see in the bone, that's the bone pelvis. This spot here that you can see on the right, this is a prostate cancer metastasis. So again, we call it upstaging. It means patient is no longer uh, with localized disease. It is with a metastatic disease, which is different in terms of treatment. But it can go, go the other way around. It can downstage patients because, you know, like I said, these bone scans are calcium mimetic agents. So they are not cancer specific. They just show where the bone is actively remodeling and actively um, doing something, which is the case in, for prostate cancer metastasis reaction, surrounding reaction, but it's for many other uh, potential uh, causes such as trauma or anything else. And so it's very common to have this focal uptake, for example, in the ribs, because in the ribs we usually have, um, it's often to have some kind of minor trauma or things like that. And we did the PSMA PET scan on that patient. And finally, so that's the, the bone scan signal. This is what we see here. This is what we see here. And you can see there is no signal on the PSMA PET. So we call it downstaging. The patient was suspected to have metastasis, but finally, with the PSMA PET scan, we downstaged the patient and there was no metastasis. So he is eligible for local treatment. At the end, if you have to choose between bone scan and PSMA PET, you have to do PSMA PET. Here are some examples of uh, the same patients, head to head, the bone scan, and the PSMA PET, you can see that you usually you see much more disease on the PSMA PET than on the bone scan. <clears throat> what about the local staging, the prostate itself? Um, you may be aware that MRI is the imaging modality of reference for that, and it will stay. I think a PSMA PET cannot replace MRI for the local staging, which means uh, to see accurately if the prostate cancer within the prostate has spread out just outside of the capsule of the prostate or to just measure the size to accurately define the contour of the tumor. This MRI remains the best. 
Although now Chismepet can, can bring some complementary informations and additional informations that are uh, that can help. You, we know that if we compare the tumor volumes that we see on on MRI and on PSMP, there is only a partial overlap. So there is complementarity between both modalities. But at the end, if you want, if you have to choose one, you would do MRI. If you want to do the best, you do both. In some cases, it can help for biopsies. You know, some patients, we know they have prostate cancer because the PSA is eleva elevated, but for some reason, the MRI is difficult to read because sometimes it's difficult to read. And sometimes the biopsy come back negative. So we don't have proof that there is prostate cancer, but we know or we have a strong suspicion of it. And so here, PSMP can help to better target the biopsy. You can see that. So we work with doctors here uh, who do the ultrasound guided biopsy here at UCLA. And we fuse the images with them. We guide them to basically indicate where they have to do the biopsy to be sure to not miss the cancer focus and get the tissue to be analyzed to get the diagnostic. Now let's look at the second indication, the recurrence. So here we talk about patient men that have been treated initially with a surgery or radiation therapy for their prostate cancer. Some will be lucky and will be cured for life. And some are less lucky. You monitor the patient afterwards and the PSA, which is the blood test you do that indicates if there are still some prostate cell or prostate cancer cells in the body that produce this uh, protein that you can detect in the blood. Well, if it is elevated after prostate cancer surgery, it means prostate cancer has come back. You just don't know where it is, but you know it has come back. So here, PSA and CT play the role of localizing where this PSA is coming from that you detected in the blood and to see where this reference is. So often it is in the prostate fossa, in the prostate bed, it's just, you know, for the surgeon, it's not always easy to remove all the prostate tissue, all the prostate cancer, and sometimes there's some cell left down there. What we know, I just showed this slide, which is a bit technical, there are many numbers, but uh, we know from this cohort of 635 patients, so pretty big numbers, the detection rate, detection rate means positivity rate. It means when a scan is uh, rated as positive, detected some disease somewhere. And of course, this is very well correlated with the PSA level. The higher the PSA is, the more likely your scan will be positive because the disease is basically bigger. The lower the PSA is, the less likely your scan will be positive because the disease is smaller and so more difficult to be seen. And so that's a question that comes back often from the patients. Uh, at which PSA should I do a scan? Is it worth to do it uh, even if my PSA is like 0.1? You can see here the detection rates that are pretty reliable. You can see that above five, you will see the disease in any case. Uh, you can see that below one, it's like a 50-50 chance. And below 0.5, you reach like maybe 30% chance of seeing some disease somewhere. Having said that, when we don't see any disease and we have what we call a PSMF negative scan, this has high value. It means you would be usually at better uh, prognosis with a better outcome after treatment when you have a negative scan, usually because it means the disease is smaller. That goes again here. That's a, a much bigger cohort with 2,500 uh, 2, patients that show more or less the same numbers here. So you can see the drop coming when the PSA gets below one. But be before, you know, with CT and bone scan, the threshold was at PSA 10. So it was way too late um, with the conventional imaging uh, localization. It was way too late because the PSA was very high already. This, I showed this study to just highlight this number. It means that Basically, in half of the case, the management will be impacted by the scan. So if you do the scan, it will change your treatment plan in 50% uh, with a 50% change. So this is consistent across multiple studies. Now, now we can compare it to the, the current uh, standard of care uh, procedure for that, which is called fusiclovine or axiomine, which is also a PET-CT imaging technique. Just the mechanism 
uh, that of the uptake of the tracer is different. Here we show an amino acid metabolism tracer. So these are uh, receptors and, and transporters and, and the prostate cancer cells that are upregulated because they consume a lot of amino acids, a lot of proteins. And this increased metabolism can be uh, can be seen with this tracer because the tracer will act as a uh, amino acid, will be taken up by the cells and the prostate cancer cells because they have higher activity. You can see these uh, lesions here as well. We can note the background uptake in the muscle because it's amino acid protein. So this technique is currently the standard of care reimbursed and, and that's how we do prostate cancer staging. But at low PSA level, doesn't work very well. And so we showed in a study when the PSA was low two, so pretty early, but when the disease is still maybe curable because the disease is small, maybe you should treat that lesion, chance to be cured are not uh, are existing still. So that's the relevant population when the PSA is not high already, that it's not too late. And in that setting, axumin doesn't perform very well whereas PSMA PET performed very well. You can see here a patient with a lymph node here that was not positive, that was negative on the axumin scan. And you basically see, see uh, twice more disease with PSMA PET scan in comparison to axumin. Here is another example. You can see the lesion was called positive here on the uh, axumin scan, but you can see how the update intensity of the signal is much higher with PSMA and so much easier to detect. And this is the example I just showed before. So at the end, we know that when we compare PSMA PET to all other imaging modality for prostate cancer staging, now it's pretty clear. Here I put like many reports, many studies out there in PubMed, the, uh, the literature, the scientific literature, and basically PSMA PET is superior to conventional imaging, superior to choline PET, superior to precipitin PET. So if you have to do one, it is PSMA PET. And now it's approved here at uh, UCLA. It's also approved at UCSF because we joined our team efforts to do a joint submission and, and joint effort to do that. Uh, this uh, was highlighted in the news. We got pretty uh, good um, media coverage with that, TV or New York Times. And we have put together an uh, on the UCLA website, like a, a whole page with all the information, the links, what to click. So this can be helpful if you, if you need that. And now I'm going to go to the second part of the presentation is what to do with the findings. Why should I do that and how it can help the treatments and how uh, PSMA PET based treatments are doing in patients. So we have shown uh, that to better do the radiation therapy planning, you do it better basically with PSMA PET. In that stu two studies, one is for salvage radiation therapy, one is for primary radiation therapy. You can see in green here and in orange here, these are what we call in radiation therapy, the target volumes for the radiation fields. That's what the radiation oncologists will irradiate. So of course the prostate, but also this uh, lymph node area because it is known that a lot of the prostate cancer disease uh, can be spread out in this lymph node. So usually that's why we treat. And we did a study and we look at the, the PET, PSMA PET CT findings in a patient population that would have been treated with radiation therapy. We put all the lesions we found together in 300 patients in one study, in 200 patients in another study. And we put all the lesions here and you can see all these yellow spots. Basically, these would have been missed by this radiation. So. I think it's important to do a PSMA PET-CT for radiation therapy planning. Here is uh, what I wanted to, I, I talked to about it just before. In light gray here, you have patients with a negative PSMA PET, which means we don't see any disease. In dark gray here, you have patients with a PSMA PET positive disease that we detected outside of the, of the prostate. And you can see that when you have a negative scan, that you do much better. The time to progression is much longer than when you have a positive scan. So sometimes patients are disappointed because the scan was uh, not positive, was negative. So it didn't detect the disease. 
but I actually say that to patients, you know, it's better to have a negative scan than a positive scan. Look how patients with a, a negative scan, how better they do. Let me show you uh, two patient stories here. This is uh, the story of a patient who got a surgery in 2007. 10 years later, PSA started to climb, 0.2. He got radiation therapy to the prostate bed, no hormonal treatment, but then PSA continued to rise, went to 0.6. We did the PSM PET scan that detected this tiny rib metastasis here. This one was irradiated properly uh, with radiation therapy and without hormonal treatment. And now we had like uh, two or three years of follow up, and PSA is still undetectable. So in that case, it worked really well. Here is another example uh, that's a perirectal lymph node. You can see it's very, very tiny. This could have been never seen or detected by any scan. Uh, other than PSMA PET. Patient had uh, more or less a similar case scenario here. He had surgery, then PSA started to rise after surgery and uh, salvage radiation therapy. PSMA PET detected this pelvic lymph node. He got irradiated there, just there, without any other treatment. And three years later, the PSA is now uh, at zero. So patient is actually here and we tell the story. Ten, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and subsequently had surgery. I underwent my first round of radiation therapy at that time. But then after three or four years, it once again began to creep up again. My interest was in reissue work preparing older albums, older tapes for reissue on CD. As a mastering engineer, the worst thing you can do is, is go in heavy handed with your digital tools and cause some kind of degradation to the audio in the sense of what gave the music its life, its excitement. If you do too much audio cleanup, you can suck the life right out of a recording. My doctor said, that there's this new treatment that they would like to try on me. PSMA PET CT is a new imaging technique to inject a radioactive molecule that targets specifically a protein called PSMA, prostate specific membrane antigen. A lot of radioactive tracer goes to the prostate cancer lesions and can be detected by the PET CT scanner. It is like adding color to a black and white image. When they reviewed the x-ray, they saw that there was one small little point in my abdomen that showed up as cancerous. But this time they were able to locate it very specifically, radiate with pinpoint accuracy so that no other tissue was damaged anywhere else in my abdomen. And three years after, he's still without any sign of active disease. So PSMA PET CT really helped him to get a successful, individualized, targeted therapy. It is uh, remarkably similar to what I was doing to these audio tapes, removing just what needed to re be removed and leaving everything else. My treatment at UCLA was, well, it was just incredible. I've had no side effects of the treatment. I'm able to live a completely normal life. I'm getting ready to retire and I'm looking forward to a long and fun retirement. So it's kind of nice to have the case and then the patient. Uh, so here, what we see on this graph is uh, the best PSA response. So you treat, then you, you measure the PSA after the treatment and you see if the PSA goes up or goes down. And you can see that in every bar is a patient. And if it goes up, it will be there. And if it goes down, it goes that way. And you have the percentage change and you see that in 80% of the patient, you'll have a PSA response, meaning you target the disease, PSA goes down. How long it will stay, this depends on the patient, but at least you induce a tumor response with the treatment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Here are some examples of patients that were treated, but then two, two years later, there are new lymph nodes coming out. Here, for example, this one was treated as well. You can see this uh, pelvic lymph node here treated, and then another one come back here. But each time is like two year, one year in between. 
and then one year later another one is here so some patients are happy with that some are not i think overall it can um, spare the patient the hormonal therapy side effect the castration side effect so it doesn't mean it will cure the patients it's pretty rare it can happen but it's rare but it can hold and, and delay the initiation of uh, treatment with more side effects which is i think very important for quality of life and I'm, I'm going to give here an opening so that's more for advanced patient and that's on its way uh, psma can be used like we've seen here for imaging, but it also can be used for targeted radio ligand therapy. So instead of having a, a radionuclide that can be used for doing imaging, you can do a radionuclide that go also to GSMA, but that deliver radiation therapy locally, just a few millimeters around where it has been emitted. And so for patients with multiple metastases like that, that cannot be treated with external beam radiation therapy because there are too many, uh, you can treat it with what we call molecular uh, radiotherapy or radionuclide therapy. Basically, you inject this radioactive drug that will go to the PSMA target again and, and stay there and deliver locally uh, the uh, small radiation therapy. And it works well in some patients. Of course, some respond well, some don't respond well. If you are to okay, where it works very well, you see this appearance of all lesions. You see that after four cycles, uh, the PSA goes very at very low level. And so for that treatment, you first need to see if there is enough PSMA target expression for the treatment. So you need to do a PSMA PET scan first. That's why we do it here. And I think this will be approved maybe at the end of the year, the treatment. And so many patients will need a scan, a PSMA PET scan to be uh, to see if they are eligible or not to get this treatment. This will be a thing by the end of the year. Again, like I said at the beginning, there are other players, there are other molecules for PSMA PET CT imaging. Uh, some are free of use, uh, academic sites like us with Gallium 68, PSMA 11. Some are owned by private company and industry biopharma, so they are on its way. We were the first to get it approved, but we can do it only at UCLA and UCSF because our manufacturing process is done on site. But with this big company, they can do a mass scale production and ship it basically everywhere in the US. So at some point, I think by the end of the year as well, a PSMA PET will be much more available than, a, than now where it's confined to just UCLA and UCSF. So I put here some information if you want to, to get a scan. The take home message here is you have to be referred by your urologist or oncologist or radiation oncologist. You cannot just call and, and make an appointment like that. You need to. Uh, that's the, the medical team that has to help you to schedule it. So I put here the, the contact info. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you want, or there are other emails as, as well here. And I will finish with that. We still have two clinical trials uh, in which we do PSMF CT and in which we provide the PSMF CT for free because it's research only. One is a randomized trial, 50 50 chance to get the scan or not the scan. It's for patients who are scheduled to get definitive radiation therapy for their primary staging. And one is uh, the other trial is a multiple imaging time point trial. So patients undergo three times the PSMA PET scan uh, when they just before and when they start the uh, novel androgen receptor axis inhibitor, which is a drug that you can call that extendi, uh, apalutamid. Um, Adiraterol, all these drugs. So if you think you may be eligible, please uh, send me an email and it will be uh, a pleasure to, to talk about you about these uh, two studies. With this, I thank um, uh, all my collaborators, our team, research team, clinical team. So it's tricky when you do this uh, thank you slide, you always forget people, but of course it's a teamwork. So happy to take any question now and uh, thank you again for your attention. I see here um, the first question in the Q&A. The Q Why is this test approved only in California and when might it be available in other states? So maybe to answer that, I'll go back to that slide. So the one that we have approved here 
in California and at UCLA and CSF is that one. So this one was free of use. Anyone that has the physical and logistic capability to do it can do it, as long as it's raised the quality criteria for a good manufacturing process and APA standard. And that's what we did here at UCLA. All these ones are owned by a big company, pharma company, and they would have the, the capacity to sell it and, and ship it for wide scale use, you know. But currently, this one can be done only at UCLA and UCSF. You know, the half life of Gallium 68 is one hour. So you have very limited time uh, to, to make the images after the tracer has been uh, manufactured because it decays very quickly, it's radioactive. So you have very limited time. And uh, also the, this gallium 68, you cannot produce a lot per day. So for example, at, at UCLA, we do around uh, six patients per day and we cannot do much more because you're limited in terms of capacity of production. I will not go in, into radiochemistry details, but you have to know that with F18, here you can do wide scale mass production. And this company will have a distribution network well established, I hope to be able to provide it uh, very, very widely, remotely, and for everyone, uh, I hope so, by the end of the year. So it's coming. So it's just about the molecule we need and the, the manufacturing process. And the FDA approved the manufacturing process, which is done in UCLA. So that's why it's approved on UCLA and UCSA. I hope it answered your question. What are the adverse effects uh, of PSMA? on areas outside of the prostate. So the PET scan, nuclear medicine is using PET scan. PET scan, nuclear medicine means tracer. Why is it called tracer? It's because the amount of the tracer and radioactivity you inject is so tiny that it does not interact with the body. It does not interact with the metabolism of the body. It's not like a CT contrast agent. You know, when you do CT, uh, the radiologists usually they, they want to see better the, the artery than the vein. So they inject an iodine CT uh, contrast that will help them to better differentiate what is vascular or not. And here, the amount that you inject can have some side effects. I'm sure you have some CT uh, done before. You can feel a little bit some heat in the arms. Some people are allergic to iodine. You can have some problem a little bit in the kidney. All this is very rare, but it is possible. With nuclear medicine tracer, not a single side effect has ever been reported since the 50s because the amount of tracer you inject is, uh, is like one million times less than the amount of what you inject, for example, with the CT contrast. But because it is radioactive and radioactivity is the most reliable physical process we can measure, more than sound, more than temperature, more than light. One count, you count it, you can detect it. You can make images pretty good out of very, very tiny amount of radioactivity. So that's why there is no side effect. And that's why we use these tracers that are radioactive because radioactivity allows you to inject a tracer that does not interact with the body but you can still detect some signal out of it and make images out of it. So I hope that answers the question. Is this test only recommended when you suspect prostate cancer metastasis? That's a good question. Uh, let's say, let's separate it in two ways. At primary staging, I would say mostly yes, it is. You know, when uh, patient get initially staged for their prostate cancer, they get biopsy, they have CT, you have multiple features of the prostate. They say the prostate cancer is at high risk, intermediate risk or low risk of metastasis and, and having a spread out of the prostate. So when, when it's like low risk prostate cancer, even six prostate cancer, low PSA level, you don't suspect metastasis and you don't know even if you need to treat because they are very slow, indolent, so here, I think chest effects is not really indicated because it is very likely that you will see nothing and it's not indicated. When patients are at high risk, 
of metastasis, so reason 9, reason 10, high PSA, then yes, uh, you have to do a PSA method to see if the disease has spread out outside of the prostate because you don't have this information yet. So that's when you suspect prostate cancer metastasis. Now let's go into a second scenario when uh, prostate cancer has already been treated and patient uh, doctors suspect a recurrence based on the PSA. The recurrence can be in the prostate fossa, prostate gland if it was with radiation therapy and the prostate has not been removed, or prostate fossa or prostate bed if the prostate has been removed by surgery before. So in that case, you want to localize where the disease, you want to estimate and see where this PSA is coming from. It can be either metastasis somewhere else in the body, but it can also be in the prostate fossa, and therefore here you would not call it metastasis. So it's really to localize what the disease is. I hope this answers the question. Okay, I see, I see here the last uh, question, which is a specific uh, individual case. PSM at three months after surgery was 0 0.008. Next three months was 0 0.016. So probably some cell, in that case, you know, when you have, sometimes, you know, the first PSA three months after surgery can still be a little bit elevated. And then you need to confirm three months later if it goes down or if it goes up, because sometimes it happens it's still a little bit elevated after the surgery. And then it was just, you have some residual PSA and it goes down, which means uh, that uh, the PSA goes to zero. When it, goes up a little bit like in that case, PSA uh, 0 0.016. Um, yeah, it means there is probably what we call a biochemical persistence. It means probably some prostate cancer cells were left down there or were not removed. So you will enter at some point in what we call the biochemical recurrence stage, which is per definition 0.2, the threshold. And the scan, you know, like I showed before, is well correlated with the, the scan positivity is well correlated with the PSA level. So let me show here. You see that under 0.2, I will show probably this one. Under 0.5, the chance to have a positive scan is about 30 to 40%. Now, again, having a negative scan is not necessarily bad. It's a good information. If you have a negative scan, what will happen probably to you is that your urologist will refer you to a radiation oncologist and say, okay, I probably left, the PSMA PET scan did not show any metastasis. PSMA PET scan was negative. So probably there are some microscopic uh, prostate cancer cell left down there. You have to irradiate this area and in about more than half of the cases, patients get cured with that. So having a negative PSMA PET scan is not necessarily bad. Now, we can be sure that at PSA of 0 0.016, the PSMA PET scan would be negative for sure because the disease is too small. Even if it's outside or somewhere else, it's too small to be seen. So I would wait to do the scan when it comes to probably something around 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 not below 0.2. But um, you don't need to wait that it gets to one. One is too high because usually when it's too at one, it's a bit too late to treat. You have a better chance of better outcome uh, when the PSA is below 0.5. So the best chance for you in your case would be to do the scan between 0.25 to 0.4. You know? I hope that answers the question. All right, no questions in the Q&A list anymore. I put one in the chat. One in the chat, sorry, how do I see that? Do you see chat? Dr. Clay, they're asking, will this groundbreaking technology eventually be used in early detection for other types of cancers? Okay, I see the question in the chat, yeah. A very, very good question. By the way, the industry has a strong interest in that. 
So it is called PSMA, prostate specific membrane antigen. Although it is not prostate specific, you have a little bit of expression in other organs and other cancers, but it is highly overexpressed by the prostate cancer cell. So even if it's a bit of a misleading name, it's still kind of relevant. The most relevant target uh, for this uh, protein overexpression is prostate cancer. That's why it is called prostate specific membrane antigen. And there is no other cancer with such level of uh, overexpression with that protein PSMA. Some people are trying, but I think the main use of PSMA is and will be prostate cancer. So I, I don't think there, will, there is a, a huge place for other types of cancer. There may be some stories and, and some study may show some things, but Clearly, if we arrive at that point here, it is because the most relevant cancer type for this target PSMA is prostate cancer. That's for sure. So the other types of cancer, let's go. Now, what, is, what about the early detection? Uh, that's a good question. I think PSMA PET is really you, the main use can be uh, to stage outside of the prostate fossa. But I show you know this slide where sometimes the disease is still at early stage. You, for some reason, don't have the proof yet that there is cancer because the biopsy come back always negative. And here, even if it's very early, you have negative biopsies or inconclusive MRI, shear chest and can help to better uh, target the biopsy to make sure you have uh, your biopsy. So that can help in that case, but it's a case by case decision. I wouldn't do a mass scale PSMA PET for every man to screen for prostate cancer. That, that is not enough, but that's not going to happen. Does it answer questions? Feel free to, to ask if not. Good question again, the intermediate risk cancer. So this is a, a debate ongoing in the, with the experts. You know, the NCCN, which is the uh, National Cancer Center uh, Guidelines, basically the guidelines Institute for Cancer in the US, they separate intermediate risk cancer into favorable intermediate risk and unfavorable uh, intermediate risk. And you know, it depends on uh, several features about the, the percentage of uh, biopsy positive, uh, the more refined reason score that we call reason grade, things like that. And at the end, if you are favorable intermediate risk. I think it's not necessary to do the PSMA PET scan because the likelihood of having metastasis is very low. If you are unfavorable intermediate risk, yes, I think you should be considered as high risk prostate cancer patient to do the scan because the risk of having metastasis is uh, real and existing. But when you take the whole basket inter uh, intermediate risk, that's more difficult to answer because you have a lot of patients that are favorable intermediate risk there. And these ones, maybe not necessary. So I would, uh, I would look at uh, the specific uh, features of your prostate cancer for you or the person you are, you're asking for and look in which bin category you end up favorable or unfavorable intermediate risk. And if it is unfavorable intermediate risk, then yes, you should do a case method scan. It looks like that's all the questions that we have today. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalei, for being here with us and for this wonderful presentation. This is such new, amazing technology that we're excited to be highlighting today. So thank you so much for your time. You're very, very welcome. The pleasure. And thank you for inviting me. Thank Please, you. Please uh, send, send emails. Um, anyway, I'm very happy to answer any emails. So that's the website. If you put on Google UCLA PSMA, you will end up on that page that gives many uh, information for uh, scheduling of PSMA PET. And like I said, you have to be referred by uh, the ring urologist. My email is here with some colleagues, and I think here my email is here as well. That's for the research studies. It's basically jkale at Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and, and hopefully we'll get to host you again in person one day. Yep, thank you very much.